Welcome to Tuesday's Technology Tip. Today we have Jean Harris. She is the Media Specialist at New Prospect Elementary School. Thank you for coming today. I'm happy to be here. Great. Ms. Harris is going to share with us a great resource called Adobe Spark. So first of all, um, what is it about Adobe Spark that you like and what is it actually? So first, Adobe Spark is um, like a resource creation tool um, that can be used for a few different things. We'll go into that in a second. But mostly, I think of it as a modern information presentation tool. Okay. Um, and I really love it because you can't help but get that nice new modern look from it, no matter mm -hmm. your experience level or the first time you try it, you're going to come out with something that looks like you've been doing graphic design for five years. Great. Okay, so you mentioned there's several parts to it. So yes. what are those so parts? The first thing, you can make a simple post. This will help some of your social media look more professional. Or if you're trying to get a big idea across to students, you can make an infographic. Okay. Um, the second part is you can make a web page. Okay. So that can amp up a student work if you want to do a whole web page. And finally, my favorite is a video. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what about using this with students? Have you used this with students yet? Yes. I personally have used it with fifth grade very successfully. Um, I would feel ultimately comfortable using it with almost any of the grades that I teach. Um, and the best thing for students is it this sounds counterintuitive, but it limits their choices. So that forces them to not get bogged down in details, to focus on the content they're trying to show off, get the job done, and it always ends up looking spectacular. Okay, sounds like a, a jam up program. Yes. <laughs> and how have students responded using Adobe Spark? Has it been pretty easy? Or? It has been almost uncomfortably easy. I think as teachers we always want to be all over everything and answering tons of questions and you feel like you're really doing your job if people need your help. Mm -hmm. And I've found with Adobe Spark that I have to really stay on top of it walking around the room because I'm not getting as many hands raised because it's so easy to figure out that they just, you show them real quick how it works, what your expectations are for the project and they just go. It's very impressive. Teachers always love to hear that word, easy. Yes. <laughs> so I'm glad that it is that easy. Do you think it's suitable for all grade levels? For individual projects, I would probably recommend third grade and above. Um, and then for second and first grade, maybe in groups or with a lot of instruction, but definitely all grades for compiling a classroom project of sorts with like a teacher-led system. but. Individual projects, I think it could be done third grade and up. Okay. Well, at this time, Miss Jean uh, Harris is going to share with us a tutorial that she has created so that we'll have step by step instructions on what exactly we need to do to use Adobe Spark. Let's dive into Adobe Spark now that you know a little bit about it. Um, first thing, you have to go to spark.adobe.com. Um, if you just type in Adobe Spark into Google, you'll it'll be the first result. That's normally how I get to it. Once you're on the home page, regardless of if you're a teacher or a student, everybody clicks the normal login button up here on the top right. And then normally our first reaction would be to continue with Google. But for Adobe Spark, we want to focus here on the right where it says login with school account. So now that we kind of have an enterprise system set up with Adobe, um, everyone already has an account, they just have to access it. So log in with school account. And then here it says email and password, but most people will only have to put in their school email. Um, and it will kind of sense that your account. So if I just click my email, it senses that my account was ready and all I have to do is click enterprise ID. Every now and then I do get a student who, where it doesn't sense their account, but all they have to do is put in their normal password that they use every day and hit sign in and it will prompt them to this page. Once you're here, just click Enterprise ID and you'll be in. Now normally, if it's your first time entering your account, it will um, bring you to a welcome page. Um, mine is opening straight up to my works, 
my project page. Um, so if you're here, you would click the plus sign. And this plus sign, this is your, your landing page where you would come if it was your first time signing in. And it has a bunch of templates to choose from, but normally I find, for me anyway, I almost always want to start from scratch. And those options are all the way down at the bottom. You can create a graphic, maybe you're making an infographic for kids, um, or a video. These are the ones that I have worked with the most, so I'm going to create a video. And this is the best part about working with students. The second you create a project, it prompts you to make a title. Um, because kids often forget to title their work, but this time they can't. Once your title is done, click Next. I'm going to do um, a biography project example because that's what we've been using Adobe Spark with lately. Okay, And then again, you get a second chance to pick a template, but I'm going to start from scratch. And it will open you up to the workspace, which is very user friendly. Um, it looks a little bit like um, Google Slides in that it has all your slides down in a list on the side or on the bottom, your slide space, and it has a toolbar on the right that has layout, theme, resize, and music. Okay, so if I'm making a biography project, I tell my kids the first thing is get your words down. So I'm going to start with my title. And I could add a video, text, photo, icon. I'm going to obviously add text. The life of Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Now to jazz this up, I'm going to add a picture. If I click this plus sign in the top right corner, I can add a video or a photo. Now I can upload a photo from my computer, or I can find free photos here within Adobe. They have a bunch of free and fair use choices. Um, they are great when you can find something that goes with your project. I don't always find what I need. Um, so today I'm going to upload a photo from my drive. Have it here in my downloads. Abraham Lincoln. And there we have it. Now he is pretty well centered on the page, but every now and then you get a photo where their heads are chopped off or something like that. If that happens, you can edit it by clicking the pencil in the top right corner, and that will give you this hand tool to drag your photo. So I'm going to drag him down a little bit so that his head isn't as chopped off. Okay. And I could make it smaller or bigger if I need to. If I don't like the way my words are sitting on the photo, I can move them around the page. It'll right align or left align automatically or center. Now, if my picture is too busy and I can't read my words, I have a couple options. I can use the split screen layout and separate my photo from my words. And this will use the colors that you've chosen in your theme. Or I can use the caption, which is um, just going to add a little bit of highlighting behind my words to make it a little clearer to read. Now, um, the one thing that I love about Adobe Spark is just how simple it is. It's very streamlined and kids can't get bogged down in trying to decide their font or their font size or trying to get everything laid out just right on the page. These are very simple, quick changes and choices. So this is really all there is. You can slightly change the font size by clicking on it and hitting T minus, but it makes big changes. So there's not a lot of choice there. Um, layout choice, picture choice, and then we can move on. Get the project done and no matter what, it always ends up looking very professional. When you're ready to hit the next slide, you just hit plus down here at the bottom and you keep going. So maybe I'll say Lincoln was born on 12-1809. Okay. And then I would add a picture and I would continue and I would finish my project. Um, then when the project is totally finished, Another great aspect of Spark Video is that the students can, or you, could add your voice to each slide. So I would hit this microphone button and read the slide aloud. Slide aloud. Now, that means when someone is viewing that video, they're not only seeing the work, but they're hearing that student's voice own the work. You can check to see if the student really understands. Can they pronounce the words that they studied? Do they sound confident? Um, 
do they feel like this knowledge is really under their belt? And then finally, as a finishing touch, you can add music, which is over here in the toolbar. And it has a bunch of free and fair use choices, and it will just add a nice quiet background music. It won't cover the student's voice, just add that extra level of professionalism. Um, and I think, especially for elementary school, this, it's going to be a level of professionalism that they could not achieve on their own without this program that streamlines their choices and makes things very um, modern and clear cut. Okay. The next great thing about Adobe Spark is that you can immediately share with your classroom. So when the project is totally finished, you or your students would hit share. Check the title, check your name. You do have to pick a category that's required. I normally pick education. And then you hit create link. This is creating a permanent link um, that will share in your classroom. Now you can share this in a classroom regardless of whether you're a teacher or a student. So if you're a student, you're gonna share it to the assignment that you were given. Or if you're creating content for your students to learn from, you can immediately put it in your classroom without any extra steps. So hopefully I'll show you that in a minute. This part does take a little bit, but normally Adobe Spark has worked very well for me. It's not slow. It doesn't ruin my lesson with wait time. All right, here we are. So I'm gonna click classroom. So if you were a student, you would choose one of your classes and then it would ask you for the assignment you're turning it into. If you're a teacher sending content, it will ask you to choose your action. Are you going to create an assignment or make an announcement? I'm going to hit make an announcement. Now, hmm, I'm going to hit go. And then I can say, oh, check out this great example. And then hit post and it's done. It's there, you're ready to go. Right, so that's Adobe Spark in a very quick nutshell. I really hope that you give it a try and that you play with it. And I think you'll find that it is incredibly user friendly and a really fun way for kids to show what they know. Thank you, Ms. Harris, for sharing with us today. You're so welcome. I hope that you will enjoy using this um, great resource that, as Ms. Harris has shared with us, is very easy to use. Tomorrow, all of our teachers in Spartanburg 1 will receive an email. This email will be from Adobe Creative Commons, and it is your welcoming email to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get started. Of course, these are also provided for you in the video that she created. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send me an email. And as always, we hope that you have a great week.